It's all tilapia, parrotfish, sabre, yeah, snapper. They buy our crab still, so. I think it's absolute nonsense. I think the general feeling down here that it is a good thing that we are going to leave the EU. What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's a cold Tuesday morning and we're here at Billingsgate Fish Market, the largest fish market in the UK. And we're here to talk to some fishmongers about their profession, the future of fishing and Brexit. So let's go do that now. From fishing quotas to territorial waters, the UK's fishing industry has been pushed front and centre throughout the Brexit debate, with politicians on both sides of the argument claiming they have the industry's best interests in mind. No children allowed, fish only. Sick of the salty waters of British politics, we wanted to hear from those whose livelihood rely on a healthy supply of fish. This led us to Billingsgate, as if you've eaten fish in London, it's probably come through this market, making it a good place to get our questions answered. We started off in the cafe to ask traders a bit about Billingsgate's history, what they make of Brexit, and what they consider to be the biggest problems facing the market today. Well, I think, you know what, well, going back many years, um, the, the, it used to be um, wholesale rather than retail, so the general public couldn't come into the market many years ago. Yeah. But that changed I think, around about 30 or 34 years ago, it changed. Oh, it's so that they, yeah. yeah, but in the old days, you'd just get the fishmonger, the people within the trade that came down here. I think they know they're going to get better quality in the market. I mean, you can go to a, fish, you can go to a supermarket and pick up fish cheap, yeah. but it's not going to be the same quality as you get down here for the money. So, um, uh, I also want to ask about, about Brexit. What would it, it would appear that more people in the market were in favour of leaving the EU yeah. um, because they saw it as a better deal for the UK in the fishing industry. Yeah. Time will be the judge of that. We, no one knows for sure what's going to happen uh, yeah, yeah, after yeah. Brexit. We're all there, like, in the dark. But I think the general feeling down here that it is a good thing that we are uh, going to leave the EU. Yeah. With breakfast done and the clock nearing 5am, we headed out onto the market floor in an effort to talk to more traders and witness the market in action. You've been selling crab here for 30, 33 years. Yeah. 33 years, that's right. And how, how has it changed this in, in the time you've been here? Massively. It's hard to explain, but massively, yeah. Really? The, there's a lot more shops now, a lot more Chinese ethnic shops now. Okay, yeah, yeah. So fish from all over the place. Yeah, but they buy our crab still, so... Is Brexit good for crabbing, in your eyes? Well, I wouldn't have a clue. I know, that's a big question. I mean, what about the... Um, that England. doesn't affect the crabs. The crabs only go out 20 miles shot. Oh, okay, cool. So, so the crabs are pretty localised. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So how long have you been uh, in the market? Next year will be 50 years. 50 years, no way. Yeah. How has it changed in that time? Has it gotten bigger, has it? Nah, it's, all, it's diminished, isn't it? It was, a, it was a large, it was a huge part of the campaigning, if I, what I remember from Brexit. Like, people were talking about fishing and the well, fishing Well, most, most of the people who voted to come out of Brexit was most people living at these fishing ports, Grimsby, Hull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, even, even, Seaside towns. Even places like Aberdeen in Scotland. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the fishermen have had enough of it, really. Yeah, they've, yeah. They've been, They've been giving a short end of the straw. Yeah. Ten year ago, probably longer than that, twenty year ago, yeah. people come that night, they was going to fishmongers. Yeah, the yeah. fishmongers are dying breed now. Mm, yeah, yeah. The, the middle of the road fishmonger is gone. Now it's just Tesco's. Yeah. Now it's Tesco's <laughs> and you That's it, yeah. So do you think it would be you think it would be better if more people came here for like home yeah, shopping? Yeah, yeah, I mean people I mean to come down more here. More customers. Yeah, and again no one no, they're buying here. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? They know where it's coming from. Yeah. The older traders reflected on the market's decades of history and gradual decline. However, we wanted to hear from the next generation of fishmongers. So how long have you been working in uh, Billingsgate? Uh, I started doing Saturday jobs when I was about 13, just for a little like, cash in hand. How has the place changed at all? Have you noticed anything? What would you say? You know, honestly, it's, it's, uh, it's not as busy as it used to be. Yeah, like, a noticeable it, difference? Noticeable. Less people want to cook. Yeah. For example, if uh, someone wants maybe a salmon fillet, for example, mm. they'd rather go Tesco's and it's all done. Easy, Whereas easy. Yeah. Not, not, it's all right. not a lot of people would know what to do with a, with a whole salmon. Yeah, because they're not used they're to not it. They're not used to it, yeah, no. Yeah, 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 would yeah. you buy a whole salmon? No, I don't, no you I'd wouldn't. Be, exactly, I'd be getting the packets from you'd Tesco. You'd go Tesco's or, or yeah. Sainsbury's and they're killing us out. How do you think How do you think you could get more of the public to come in? The social media, there's not a lot of social media on this. Yeah. I'm, I am probably the, the youngest person here today. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so, yeah. You know, so we need, to get, we need to get the next generation into Billingsgate. We need to get we need the younger to... people down here. New, yeah, yeah. new age of fish mongers. That's it. Less halibut, more hashtag. Maybe not. Though Luke wasn't the only one making points about moving into the online market. How much would you say what goes through your shop a week? How many prawns in kilos a, a, a week? week? Yeah. We roughly like two tons a week, but it's quite a lot. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we, we are almost the biggest supplier. Do you think Billingsgate can su 
find the future. Well, what Billingsgate is missing is I think the online shopping. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, but, but, but I think. I don't even know how much bigger the market could be if you go online, but. It, yeah, that would be, be much better. It's hard to start with the e commerce, with the online shopping. Mm, to get it all going. Yeah, they, yeah. because this is all whole different, all different business. That's different game, yeah. different kettle of fish. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah. <laughs> When talking about Brexit, most of the traders appeared indifferent, having bigger fish to fry. Makes sense being fishmongers and all. Though there certainly were traders in the market that were staunchly opposed to the ideas behind Brexit. So where do you get your fish from? Our fish comes from all around England and a lot of it from the Mediterranean. Oh, okay, cool. Makes Maybe. a good change because a lot of people say all our fish goes to Spain and France. Well, yeah, yeah. some of it comes back this some way as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The um, emulation of Brexit, I guess that everyone here sort of was pro, I mean it's good for fishers, or was it not really an issue here? Was it not really as hyped up as the media would have you believe? It was hyped up, but to a certain extent, to, in, my, in my view, the Brexit vote was a nonsense. Yeah. Because no one knew what they were voting for. And we yeah. still don't know what they're voting for. no question for because, uh, Well, exactly. Do you want to be in or do you out? Well, what are the options? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. People <laughs> wanted a referendum and they got one. Yeah, they yeah. voted the way they thought they wanted to go. How it's going to affect everyone, no one knows. Yeah, no one knows. That's what I think. There's no point saying it's going to be this and it's going to be this because no one knows what it's going to be yet, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think. So how long have you been uh, working at uh, Billingsgate? 25 years. 25 years? Yeah. No way. So is this is this a uh, family business? This or? is a family business, yeah. I started my grandfather. Where's the majority of your fish from? It all comes, the majority comes from Scotland, but it's all the UK ports. Scotland, oh, okay. uh, Cornwall, mm. and the, all, all, every UK port. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and a little bit gets flown in from Iceland into Heathrow. Okay, and, cool. And you, you can see it comes from all over the world. That's cool. Uh, so, so how how has how has the market changed since you've been how, for the time you've been working? There's here? there's a lot more the, the exotic fish which comes in from Australia and Asia or Asia over there. Yeah. As you can see. Yeah. There, there's there's a much bigger market for that now. Mm. Um, a lot more public come here now than they used to. Yeah, people um, buying fish for home. Yeah, so. people are eating a lot more fish, but they have to realise it is an expensive thing. It's mm. not a, it's yeah. not a cheap yeah, yeah, meal. Yeah. Like, uh, it's not an easy yeah. thing to get. No, exactly. Yeah, it's a dangerous <laughs> thing to get. Yeah. Has has Brexit been? Um, it, I don't yeah. know. It's because when we speak to everybody, they not seem to. They seem to be okay. They seem to not be too yeah, worried. Yeah, it hasn't really made um, any difference to us at the moment. And so far as the whole keeping our fishing grounds. For Britain, I think it's absolute nonsense. Really, yeah. It's, yeah, it yeah. can't be, can't be policed, and it's they're waters. You yeah, know, there's the Spanish fish them, the French fish them, the Italian fish them. Yeah, yeah. We fish them as well. So everybody's the idea them. of putting a border up and saying, you know, all the of these fish are ours. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It makes a headline, and it's well, it did. And it, yeah. you know, there's enough fish for everybody. It's, it's so it, it goes around. Yeah. <laughs> Just try and do do what you can. I mean, we're, we're online, we're offline, we're delivering. It's just you yeah, run yeah. business, you try and do what you can. So, yeah. so there were traders both for and against the referendum. Though concerns over a declining customer base, competition from supermarkets and online, as well as the rising popularity of international fish in the palace of the British public, seem much more prevalent in the market than any of the talking points of Brexit. So what do you do in the market? Polter. Oh, OK, fair. Nice one. And how long have you been doing that? Uh, for about 35 years. It's definitely changed, you know. It's sort of say, really. Yeah, fair. Because I was, I was expecting to see more. The majority of the people I spoke to were selling fish from either India or some, like. I would, I was expecting more to come from Scotland and the UK oceans, where yeah. less of the guys I spoke to were selling only UK. See the market gone now. Where is where it, where you used, where it used to be? Your cod, yeah. your haddock, your skate. You know, that's all phasing out. Yeah. It's all tilapia, parrotfish, sabre, yeah, snapper, all you know, all the yeah, uh, yeah. exotic stuff. Yeah. You know, you can't go into one of these foreign shops now and say, "Could I have a nice piece of addict for mum?" Yeah, they yeah. won't know what that is. Yeah, yeah. You ask them, them from you ask them miles, for, you ask them for a parrotfish or or something like that. They go, "Oh Easy, yeah, what yeah. you want?" Like, you know? <laughs> and that's how it's turned.